Did you know that there are more nerve cells in your brain than stars in the Milky Way? And that if you consider the blood vessels, which contain the blood cells, and lay them end to end, they will cover around 100,000 kilometers. That's a two-time trip for you around the Earth. And if that's not all, if you take the DNA out from the nucleus of all the cells of your body, of one person's body, then it will stretch to the sun, not once, but 600 times. So, to appreciate the wonder of life as we know it, we are going to go really microscopic today, going to a different world that is visible to us only with the help of special equipment like the microscope, a world that we did not know existed before the 1600s and a world that opened a can of wonder to help us discover all that we have discovered and understand what we are made up of to the minutest of the minutest details. We are going to discuss the most important unit of our body, a unit that makes us what we are, tiny units which come together in perfect coordination to give you the gift of life. You cannot ignore it because it invades every millimeter of your body, comes in so many shapes and sizes, so versatile in fact, that it has 210 avatars looking so different, doing such important stuff in your body, but at the core, essentially the same. This unit is so small, it cannot be seen with the naked eye, but this small thing has such a big impact in our lives that it makes our life and hence our existence possible. The cell, it makes life mission possible. If this is not reason enough to learn more about the cell, you should know that we human beings, however higher up the hierarchy of life that we may be, has spent the first half an hour of our life being a single unit of a cell. Cells grow, differentiate, multiply, divide, to give you a number of different specialized cells. Cells of the same time clump together to give you tissues, which come together to give you organs, which come together to give you organ systems, which then finally and finally come together to give you that most important, you. So, how many of them are there in you? Any guesses? There are anywhere between 75 and 100 trillion, mind you, not million, not billion, but trillion cells in your body. And wait a minute, if you think that these are the smallest units of your body, you are wrong. All cells are made up of atoms. And to put things into perspective, an adult human being with an average weight I'll say, of 70 kgs is made up of 7 million billion trillion. No, it's too long to say. It's 7 into 10 to the power of 27 atoms, with hydrogen atoms being number one. And the second one, any guesses? oxygen atoms being in the second place. Your body tries to keep the cells in your body as fresh as possible. And so every day, an adult human being produces 300 billion new cells. Phew, I get exhausted listening to that. Also, 300 million cells die in the human body every minute with around 600,000 particles of skin getting shed every hour. It turns out that these guys commit suicide uh, when they think they're getting too old or worn out. They have a fancy name for that as well. It's called apoptosis. Let's now dive into this amazing microscopic wonder. Let's see what makes it so special and let's see how it does the millions of functions that it does. There's been this nagging question in my mind all through school and now I think I've got the answer. The question is, why exactly are cells so small? Why can't I just have one muscle cell or just a few blood cells? Maybe just one or two big neurons in my brain. Why so many and why are they so, so tiny? I I think I've got the answer to it now. Uh, let me try and explain that to you in the simplest way possible. Now, you'll agree with me that to carry out any process, we all need to have energy. A cell also needs energy to carry out its normal functions. Now, cells produce energy for us and uh, for themselves through a process called cellular respiration. Now, what happens for this is that oxygen, oxygen molecules move into the cell and carbon dioxide molecules move out through a process called diffusion. So let me take the surface here, assume it's a cell. Now, if I keep the volume the same and break the surface down into several smaller units and then even smaller units, you can see that the total surface area is increasing. So the distance the material needs to actually move becomes much lesser and the process at the end of it becomes even more efficient. And that explains, I think, to a satisfactory extent why the cells are so small. Diffusion, by the way, is the process in which molecules move from a region of their higher concentration to a region of their lower concentration. That is, uh, from a place where there are more to a place where they are less of it or where they are less. It's like adding sugar to lime juice. So if you keep a straw at the bottom of the glass after adding sugar, it would be horribly sweet, right? Now, if you keep the straw near the top end, 
it would be too lemony. So just mix up the whole thing, shake it up nicely. So the molecules of sugar mix up and travel all over your lime juice, dissolve in water, and now it tastes just right. What did you just do? You made the sugar molecules diffuse. That is, you made them move from a region where they were more to a region where they were lesser. Similarly, if you can ask me for more examples, uh, this is something you'll know. Tea diffuses out of a tea bag into a pot of boiling water, and you have yourself a nice strong cup of tea. When you spray on a new perfume, others can actually appreciate that because the perfume molecules reach them through the same process, diffusion. Now, I hope diffusion is really, really clear to you now with all these examples, day-to-day -day examples, right? 